My name is Elkin Allen. I was asked to go to Milwaukee to cover the trial of Jeffrey Dahmer, a serial killer of 17 people. Milwaukee is a very pleasant city in the state of Wisconsin, USA, just north of Chicago on Lake Michigan. Settled by Germans in 1835, it was famous mostly for its beer. That is, until 1991, when it found to its horror that it was the home of one of the most ruthless serial killers of all time, Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer, who lived in this block on the seedier side of town. On the night of July the 22nd, a terrified young man stopped a police car to say he had escaped from a crazy killer who was going to cut his heart out and eat it. They went to the apartment where he said he had been held prisoner, and they found a dead body and 11 skulls and other human remains. We're investigating a homicide which occurred in the apartment building at 900 block of North 25th Street. We do have uh, one person in custody, and we do have a body in the residence. From our investigation, we feel that this individual strongly is involved in other homicides, uh, we have taken evidence out of the building by the medical examiner to be examined. Uh, there were some hazardous material uh, in the building which private contractors had to remove uh, from the suspect's apartment. It was really different from, from the way garbage smelled. It smelled like, it smelled worse than rotted meat. Mr. Dammler, you have a statutory right to have your preliminary examination within 10 days of today's date. Your lawyer informs me that you wish to waive or give up that 10-day limit and have the hearing scheduled on August 22nd. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Jeff Dahmer readily admitted to killing 17 young men, and he told the police where to look for their bones. When Roland Thomas began crying over his slain son, other family members leaned on one another for support. It's going to be all right. The storm's going to pass over. The storm clouds are not going to hang here always. They're going to pass over not only for us, but for the entire city. Everything will be all right. When I was asked to cover the trial, I frankly was very reluctant to make this filmed record you're going to see. Dahmer's confession, all 200 pages of it, was a catalogue of depravity about bizarre acts and parts of the body not usually mentioned. I objected. Wouldn't we just be being voyeuristic and exploitative? But when I got there, I realised that this was not a trial in the conventional sense at all. The result was preordained, whatever the verdict, Dharma would spend the rest of his life behind bars. No, for the people of Milwaukee, and perhaps for all of our civilization, this was an elaborate and necessary public expiation of his crimes in front of the relatives of the victims and the world's press and television cameras. By pleading guilty to the murders, Jeff Dahmer had left only one question open. Was he certifiably insane? A yes verdict from the jury could mean avoiding prison and living out his life in a secure hospital. A no verdict meant jail for life. To reassure America that Jeffrey Dahmer was only a sick human being and not a Halloween boogie man, his gruesome life story was told and retold in court no fewer than nine times by lawyers, by police, and by doctors. In this film, we have shared the narrative between a psychiatrist called by the prosecution, Dr. Park Dietz, a defense psychologist, Dr. Judith Becker, and the policeman in charge of the case, Detective Dennis Murphy, reading from Dharma's confession. He remembered his uh, early family life as being one of extreme tension. He states the tension came from the relationship that existed between his mother and his father. He stated that they were constantly at each other's throat and arguing. 
He stated his mother appeared to have some psychiatric problems and, in fact, had suffered a nervous breakdown at one time during his early childhood. He stated that she was on medication and had been seeing a doctor for much of the time. He states that he was advised by relatives that his mo mother had suffered a postpartum depression after he was born. And he took that to indicate that he was at least partially...